Feel like a good one, mate? Uh, yeah, it feels okay. It's trying to do me on the back of that bar Ooh, at yeah, the moment. You see that milky water up kicked up. cloud, yeah. It's certainly pulling well. Funny bite, it, uh, just a couple of little bleeps. I put the other rod down. I was just about to cast the other rod out, put the other rod down. Looked at the rod and I thought, no, just a liner. And I thought, well, that's encouraging. It's been quite quiet, that rod. And then it pulled up a little, about a couple of inches. And then I was watching the slack line at the tip and it just slowly went, slowly, slowly, slowly. So you fished this on a, a lead to come off? Yeah, that's definitely, okay. that's correct. Yeah, so no, I'm fish really- Fish safety and this amount of weed, paramount, would you yeah, say? Yeah, there's, there's not loads and loads of weed, but why risk it, you know? It's much better for the fish. You, you increase your chances of landing the fish dramatically. Since, since I started fishing with drop-off leads, and a lot of the waters I fish are quite weedy. Since I've been fishing with drop-off leads, the, the, the number of fish you land to lost is greatly improved. And of course, a lost fish, particularly if it's got tackle in it, is going to get damaged. Much better for me, much better for the fish to get that hook out, isn't it? Everyone's so, a winner. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good fish, that side. Thanks for that, Adam. Yeah. Lovely scaly one. Look at that. It is quite scaly. Let's just not, let's just not talk about it too much. <laughs> Oh, he's really big as well. Look at him. Oh, shut up, Adam. <laughs> Saw a fat oh. pounder under that bush. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you said it was all plain and no scales. This <laughs> yeah, is definitely scaly. Oh, yes. I'll keep him coming, mate. All the way. All the way. He's yours. Hey, what a pearl of a yes. fish. <laughs> Mate, that is the showstopper. Well done. <laughs> oh, God, awesome. my arm. That was a good fight. Right, guys, we, we've got the fish in the net. Now, carp care and how to handle fish is of paramount importance. We're going to show you exactly how to do that correctly next. Simon has got an absolute corker of a fish to show you. Wait till you see this is a real showstopper, isn't it, Simon? Yeah, it's a proper, proper St John's Cup. Now, one of the key things is, is keeping a fish in as pristine a nick as it was when it was caught. So we're going to take you through the procedure of getting the fish out of the water safely, transferring it to the mat, and how to treat it accordingly. So first of all, Si, I mean, you're an experienced angler. I guess you would probably... I think the first th the sort of fish care side is, is hugely important to the anglers and, the f and it starts from the moment that fish is in the net really Absolutely. and the first thing, this is a gravel pit, you've got gravelly slopes, a, a lot of anglers go you know, wearing skate shoes, whatever, trainers, you, uh, uh, boots, chesties, yeah. are, I think are essential, yeah. you know, you don't, you don't want to be dragging this fish to there to lift it out, so come to the fish, Absolutely. don't drag it up over the gravel, make sure it's, it's you know, fully supported by the water, it's not listing over on that, you know, catches itself on these rocks would be a Absolutely. disaster. Yeah. So first thing is get out to the fish uh, and then what we need to do uh, before we lift it out of the water is make sure it's folded flat in this net uh, and then what we're also going to do, uh, uh, something that you know you guys at Corder are really keen to get people doing is to, is to get this fish and the net into the sling and carry it to the unhooking mat. So because sure you and I, are, we're great believers of, of that damage to fish does happen or can happen when fish are lifted in net mesh. Yeah, absolutely. If, if this fish was sitting funny in the landing net and I lifted it clean out of the water now, if it was a peck, its peck could be broken by being bent round or snapped. Yeah. I've seen tails that have snapped straight off because right. people haven't had the fish lying flat in the net. It's folded so as they take the weight of the fish yeah. it just breaks the tail. Uh, and also th another thing that can easily happen is the rig gets caught in the material of the mesh you go to lift it and the hook just rips straight out. Really important at this stage to make sure the fish is sat in the bottom of the net, it's nice and straight, the tail's not folded around and the fins are flat. Just leading on from that guys, as, as Simon said, critically important to keep the pressure on the mouth, or to keep, make sure there's absolutely no pressure on the mouth. And one yeah. of the most common things that we see people doing is breaking down the net, and rolling everything up together and the line is rolled up with the net arms which means it's tight all the way through to the rig. You lift the fish and it tears and, and that's a common mistake isn't yeah. it Si? So really we'll important. I mean you're, you're experienced enough to unhook the fish in the water occasionally, are you going to do that now? Or well do have a look, if I'm, not ha if I'm not happy that I can't easily get to the hook I'd leave it in. Okay. Because right. I think if the fish is a bit lively and it's kicking in the net you can end up with a size 6 in your <laughs> finger but if you can easily pop the hook out while it's in the net then it's out the way. Yeah, and I think out the way just good, isn't it? last little point on that is if you unhook this fish now and go right there's my rig, drop it in the water the first swan that comes past is going to pick it up. So really important to make sure get if you do unhook it and it's still got bait on to get it up on one of the rings out the way so that you and the wildlife don't get hooked up. Absolutely, good point. Well, shall I hold the net while you can try and pull oh. the hook out? Okay, let's have a little look. Let's come out easy. Oh, brilliant, Perfect. excellent. So rig out the way. I'll yeah. hook that into the rod like you said. <laughs> yeah. 
Have you got the net? Yeah, fantastic. Cool. There you go, mate. Thank you. <clears throat> Now Simon's just checking the fins are, are nice and flat against the fish's body. It's safely in the soft sling. There's no mesh that's going to that's under tension that could tear or do any damage at all. So if you can, if you can get down to the water, whenever you land a fish, good practice, get it out with the sling, not with the net mesh. Okay, the fish is onto a nice big fully padded mat. Let's have a look at what you caught, Simon. I know it's a bit special, this carp. <laughs> Sneaky preview in the landing net. Oh, look at those scales. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I want one of those. Proper, proper. Whoa. Oh yes. Cracking fish. Again, yeah. always easy Massive if there's two great. of you guys. But huge great mouth, immaculate carp. Um, if you want to lift him up, we'll get the, the mesh out of the way and drop him straight in the sling. Obviously not drop him. Sling's already zeroed, guys. That's good, you know. Just make sure you're well organised. We've got a weighing crook. Well, Adam, you are the best judge of fish weights of any man I've ever met. What do That's you reckon? a compliment. <laughs> um, oh, you're putting me on the spot now. I reckon he's about 22 and a half. That'll do me. What do you think? That'll be fine. I'm happy with anything, <laughs> <laughs> as ever. I'm better at judging them in the water than on the bank. You pressured me there. Right. Well, there you go. <laughs> a bit bigger than we thought. I hadn't felt the weight of him. He's a lot bigger than I thought. 28 pounds on the nose. Simon, you're made up with that. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely Happy excellent. Days. Fantastic. Well, you can see we're both excited over this. A very special carp indeed. So we're just going to have a look at its mouth. There was a little mark where my hook was in there, Adam. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the old carp care kit on there. And then you've got the two bottles and the cotton buds. We've got the uh, the mouth and the body. Obviously yeah. we want the mouth, so we'll just pick that out. We're just going to put a little bit on that mark where the hook was. But that's a very clean mouth anyway. That's excellent a fish. And there's no, guys, if, you, if you've got a, a treatment like that, always look at the body, you know, if it's got a lifted scale or, or any kind of blemish, really, you can treat it with the, the body ointment and, and keep these carpets pristine as this. I yeah, mean, great looking fish. couldn't have a better example, could no, you, Simon? No, that's a belt, isn't it? That's Again, another key that. thing, while your fish is on the mat, is to keep it nice and wet. You see some people holding the bottle right low over the fish. Fish kicks, Let's hits the bottle, so give it a bit of space. Yeah. There and it's always worth putting your hand over its eyes as well, Adam. Yes. That's you know, one thing you see on the fish farm. The darker they are, the quieter they are. So. Good tip. Excellent tip. I'm not a great fan of the old stick your thumb in the mouth. That's <laughs> no. a bit old school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's hold him up and see what you've got there, mate. That's, I'm very envious. <sighs> oh, a cracker. Well done. And that is how to safely handle a carp on the bank from netting it all the way through we're going to return this fella after we've done a couple of still photographs.